Jeremiah. We have, uh, let's get the camera hand on. We're going to look at a few items here. We greet you in the only name, one name. And uh, we've got lots of popcorn over there. I mentioned to you, I mentioned that we're going to make this ministry pretty much popcorn. And uh, we're going to bounce all over the place and we're going to look at our playlist. And that's what we're going to do here. Now, let's move on. As I've given a quite a bit of introduction here, or uh, prompted you, prepped you, probably a better word. And now let's get to it. Okay, now I want to look at the adults in the room. That's January's uh, matrix. So we're going to just add some subjects. Okay, let, 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 me, let me tell you what we're going to do as, as opposed to, uh, let me show you what we're going to do in, in real time. What we're going to do is, we're going to talk about Rosh Hashanah, Happy New Year, welcome. Uh, and that, of course, is the new year in September for the Hebrews. And you have uh, seven festivals, and you have a couple at the beginning of the new year. And Rosh Hashanah, or Feast of Trumpets, or Feast of Moons, is the first one. And there are horns sounding, and that begins your celebration. Now, so it's Happy New Year, it's um, Rosh Hashanah, it is God Breathe on Us, Rosh. New, you can't have new without oxygen. You can't have new without God. God's name is God lives, Jesse. Jesse means the Lord lives. And as the Master said, he has life in himself. Nobody can give you life unless they have life. That's the point. So you're looking for God to breathe on you a new year. You're looking for God to breathe again. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. That's what we do here. We, we look for the breath of life. I think the Greek word is infusao. Breathe on me. God breathed into man a living soul. God's spirit hovered over the face of the earth. So God speaks to things and things happen. That's the way it goes. He speaks you and I into existence. Inside of red dirt. Red blood dirt. That's what happened. And uh, in the new year is the same thing all over again. Breathe that same breath that brought me life, made me, bring it back again. The manufacturer of my soul, you, you need that manufacturer. There's nothing like the manufacturer for repairing something uh, in any way, right? To restore, to, to respire. The one that made the spirit is the one that fills the lungs in the spirit. The one that made the soul is the one that's going to bring back happiness to the soul. So it's like a happy new year in Fusao, and it is for red dirt. Tabernacle here, Lord, that's what it means. Tabernacle means to hang out here. And that, of course, is the Feast of Tabernacles, which is right there at the beginning of the festivals of the Hebrews, correct? It's actually the last festival um, from looking at it from the March New Year uh, calendar. So, because that's where you end up being with God. We, we talked about that in Beauty, which is number seven here, and that is seven point, uh, I forgot, but it's right there under Beauty, right? Well, you're going to hang out with the Lord, and that's the whole goal here. That's the entire goal, right? Is to hang out with the Lord. Tabernacle here. Breathe on us. New exhale. 
from Mr. Magnanimous, the Magnanimous One, the All-Powerful, the Lord Adonai. So that's what you're looking forward to? Let us, thy chosen, receive thy river of love. Start the new year with agape joy. Let, let's start the, the year out right. Just as God separated, separated the waters. Okay, he, separ he separated the waters. Where's the other half of the waters? The ocean is only half of the waters. I've been through this quite a few times with you, uh, for those of you who are interested in science. Um, we don't have that many people. We have a thousand subscribers, but a lot of people aren't that much interested in a lot of Bible study. They, they, they want to go listen to the romance music or something that the, the 101 strings. I don't blame them for doing that, but it's, um, you know, we're here for Bible study, and we'll, 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 we'll get some of these uh, curious people uh, in, 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 in the Lord and in Christianity. We'll get them, you know, we're... You know, we're drawing them unto the Son of the Living God. That's our job. And right now, evangelism, evangelism is not doing very well. Basketball is doing better. You know, secular, atheistic academics is doing very well. Politics, MAGA crowd stuff, uh, you know, different kinds of perversions. We won't get into here on, in this video, on this in this ministry. But a lot of weird perversions and everything's going on, and that's getting everyone's attention. But we're here for those who are esoteric, those who are going to uh, be the, uh, the remnant, those who are just a few of the many. Many are called, a few are chosen, and we're here to help those who are chosen and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who have an ear to hear what the word of the Lord is. And the Lord's going to give you a new exhale from his magnanimous ghost, and, and it's, uh, it's going to be for you, the chosen, to receive the river of love. And that's what you're going to get, okay? And you can't beat that. Start the new year out with agape joy. One of the words we have here we use quite a bit is love joy here. He has made me glad. That's who makes you glad. So you sound the horn, the shofar, the king has arrived. And in newness and freshness and beauty, the city is a glow of the glory of the Lord. That's the key here. And purity has covered you. Uh, that's what you need. You need to be covered in purity. That's his glory. And you, we who have been graced, we own that covering. Yom Kapara in Hebrew. And, uh, the undeserved ones are those who are graced. And you have the state of being covered. Just as if you never sinned. And the results are praises. Praises unto our God. Uh, uh, meaning, this is what you've done, and we recognize that, okay? Worship means it's very valuable what you've got. We worship you because it's valuable. The grace of God is very, very, very valuable, right? God can't see anything in you anymore. He's chosen not to look at your errors ever again, so there you go. And you keep that covering, as the Master said in the book of Revelation, by not getting, becoming naked. And that's very unfortunate, but it happens. Where people get out there in the world, and they're back naked again. They're not covered anymore. You want to maintain that covering by remaining in the love of God. That's what you do. Jude said it beautifully. Remain in the love of God. Remain in the love of Jesus. That's what we're here to do. Okay? Love believes everything. Love doesn't have a problem with confidence. These three abide, faith, hope, and love. If love abides, faith and hope abide. Okay? Purity's covered you, you the subscribe. They're, a big word in the world right now is subscribe. I just looked at the Old Testament reference to the word subscribe. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a Hebrew term. Point being that you have joined the team. That's what it means. Put it in American quick terminology, right? Or definition. It means you've joined the team. Right? It, 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 you might just describe it as you're under the ideas. 
you have joined the ideas and the ideas you have submitted to you have allowed those ideas to control you therefore you are, you have submitted to those ideas if you let love control you then you are submitted to love because you're yielding your abilities to that concept when you yield your 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 body and your mind to a concept then that concept is what you are subscribed to sub means under scribe means right so you have now written yourself in stone in that particular activity subscribe you could say subservient you could say subordinate it doesn't matter it just means that that you are now a participant in that category okay so the, the name of this is going to be uh, the adults in the room and this is what happens in heaven God's going to gather and, and the, you might say the Hebrew word I think one of the Hebrew words I have to double check is Ursa so so you are now part of the gathering there's another Greek word but they have different I can't think of it right now but Ursa is is gathering um Jeru is join uh, Levi is a, is a word that can be used for join Levi Jeru is union um Pergamus means bad union let, let, let's move on we get into this union thing of of reconciliation uh, uh, two parties that are apart and now the parties are back together again that's called reconciliation and, that, and that's what's going on here and I'm calling this the adults in the room because what we're going to do is we're going to look at how how your Bible talks about people being basically in only three categories and we're, we're going to get into this And these are my rough draft notes for the adults in the room because I'm going to tie in some politics and so forth to point out the fact that when you're in the world and you're not devoted to basic church activities then that means you're either unsaved or a baby Christian that's the point and I might add that to 19. 19 already is a little, a little complicated here in this ministry as we begin to define what 19 is. 19 is for baby Christians and for your, your development. Christianity has two basic periods. Your initiation, Paul calls it illumination, and your subsequent life in your human body. Then, of course, there's heaven, but we're going to focus on two on 19. To learn how to distinguish, and I'll point that out, it's very easy to distinguish when your Bible is teaching your, your initiation and your post-initiation. Then there's combining initiation and post-initiation. Then there's combining initiation, post-initiation, and then heaven. And then you, you can even go further by saying pre when you were when you were born in your mother's womb and God thought of you, then that makes four uh, lives you have and so it can get a little complicated but it's, it's not that bad so we're going to get into this uh, the gathering of adults and we're going to focus on a lot of different issues and I'm going to identify each one of them for you as I, you begin to learn how to look at subjects identify subjects and then define that subject based upon the context that we're using for example I'm going to probably look at um, uh, what's that Psalm 50 and so forth gather unto me those who have made a covenant with me my saints my sacrifice a very powerful scripture here and let's get take a look at that get my lights here pardon me as we uh, gather unto me let's let that go I, I want to go to that but I, I want to stick to this right here because I'm going to get sidetracked but gather unto me it goes back to gather again 
and the criteria for being gathered. As, as you know, the criteria for being gathered is, is always the same thing. It's sound doctrine and, and living bread. That's the, that's the criteria. And, and by doing that, you make a covenant. You, you have made an agreement to be someone who used to listen to lies and confusion in the world, and now you're going to listen to the truth. And obviously, you're not going to play games. Otherwise, there could be some problems. So gather unto me those who have uh, my saints who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So that, which that scripture is basically saying the same thing over and over again. Jeremiah, we back to living bread again. <laughs> you you can't get away from living bread. It's everywhere. And, and we, when we get into this New Year observation, I call this uh, Rosh Hashanah Oida Ursa here. This board I have here, which means you know full well and properly, and Ursa meaning union or gathering. So you're looking at a gathering and you're, of people who know the Lord, and, 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 that's, and that's what this is about. That's why Paul says, I want you rooted and grounded. Okay, I want you rooted and grounded. Why? I want you rooted and grounded because that... That's making sure of your salvation. That's the point. When, when I convert someone, and we have, we have Bible study here, and people get converted, we're not here to, to plant you sloppily. I see sloppy planting all over the place. Now, I'm not saying that I'm some, some sort of super giant organizer. What I'm saying is that I make sure that people who follow along here, uh, you're going to get rooted and grounded well. And a lot of people don't want to get rooted and grounded because they're afraid of living bread. They, 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 they've heard a, a message that is conducive to enjoying the world and be saved. That's what they're, that's what they're um, clinging on to. They're, they're clinging to. A lot of people are clinging to that. Not everybody, but a lot of people are clinging to the idea that uh, over here they're telling me that uh, I can party and I'm still saved and why would I come to you and, and I want to party and be saved. You know, if Jesus tells me to go to Africa and, 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 and face a lot of horrible things, I'm going to tell him, no way, I'm not going. And there's a loser. That's the point. Boots on the ground. Well, I, I, I got to go party. You know, I got to go to whatever. The point is that uh, it's by sacrifice. That's the point. It's by denial. It's by living bread. It's by putting this mind on you, in you. And, and, and many of you can tell that, you know, some of you out there, you can tell when people have not put this mind in them, can't you? you know, they, they just haven't put this mind in them. They haven't put that mind on And what will happen is you have a loser. And that goes for a person that's not converted or converted. Either way. Obviously, a person that's not converted is not saved. However, if you have that mindset when you, when you go to the cross and you, and you repent and you still have the mind that you're in charge and he ain't and, and, and everything has to go your way and, you don't, and, and you, you know, you're wasting your time being converted. Well, right, because if any man come after me, let him. So come after him means you come after him, but you must put the mind on. That's the point. And we're going to get into that. Um, I have some, some notes here that I'm going to get into right now um, because I, I still have to go back over April showers. Um, the, the, the matrix that I made uh, in April, I was very happy with it. Um, and I'm very excited about it because what's exciting about your Bible study, at least it is for me and it should be for you, I, I would say, it's for you to have the ability to put concepts together so that you become a mature Christian. You become an intermediate student. And that's the goal here. You can take your time doing it, obviously. We're not here to rush uh, the Lord's timing for you. It's just that uh, we're here to make it available for you to enter into intermediate, uh, solid foundation um, Christianity here, Protestantism. And it's really not that difficult. It takes time, and it takes a little discipline. That's all it takes. Some of you might say there's a little algebra here or something. No, not really. There's only a little. There might be a little equation here. You know, n plus 5 equals 10. 
subtract five to both sides so in equals five or so you know you did there are different that there are very simple ways of doing things here and it shouldn't get too difficult for you out there now I'm not going to go rape or showers I have to have some more organizing to finalize April showers for you but once again it's just simply putting concepts together I put down here agree learn required learning confidence expectation wisdom agape ownership uh, uh, fulfillment of the royal law grace to you I'm in grace uh, obey uh, repentance and baptism which was part of your original agreement and then there's uh, fulfilling the royals and you own peace peace wonderful peace and you own rest for the soul and that's sabbatism and that's what uh, was spring is here the April matrix okay now we have a December matrix and I'm gonna go over this don't worry about that uh, for those of you concerned we're gonna go over the April matrix spring is here uh, I like the title spring is here I might keep that so spring is here so or April showers either one there you, you can approach those those concepts any way you kind of want to I mean as long as the Lord is, uh, is supervising you but we have a certain uh, I have a certain uh, sequence that I'm going to get into and I, I'm going to keep that in stone there I like that sequence okay an agreement the agreement is to learn and when you're learning there's a required learning that's what that's what we focus on here which is living bread we focus on living bread here quite a bit the red letters of Jesus Christ and a lot of words of Paul and so forth we focus on the heavy hitters here heavy hitters here are take up your cross repent and be baptized you know, heavy hitters here are if you want to be great in God's kingdom learn to be the servant of all this is these are heavy hitters what, 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 what's the criteria for making it to the only party in town huh what did the master say are the behaviors that get you into his uh, end times party and it's the only party by the way it is the only party the master's party is the only party at the end of the age here it's the only party there are no other places to go to party it is it, he calls it his bash basically if I can paraphrase him put it in an American phraseology here terms it's it's a bash it's a party it's VSOP there's only one performance and if you don't make this you're hurting for certain and then he tells you that the the um, the criteria or the behavior uh, uh, that's going to get you into the party he didn't say amazing grace how sweet the sound you're saved by grace and just be quiet he didn't say that he gave you specific behaviors that people do who are gonna be at the party that's why it's irritating to hang around people who want to talk about grace all the time is that we don't have any instructions oh, I'm saved by grace whatever bro uh, let's call it a day good night everyone pass me a beer or pass me a marijuana joint or something or you know all this wild dumb lifestyle you know uh, it gets all over the place doesn't mean they're not, they're not gonna get saved or anything that's not the point the point is that it's all dumb dumb isn't it to say that you can do what you want to do or something or you know you, oh well Jesus said that the criteria for being at his banquet was to take care of sister so-and-so and go to the hospital and say, see how she's doing and oh, I, I don't know he didn't say that no I uh, did he say that uh, no I, I thought it was just grace brother you know uh, grace 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 and then when you say that they say it's not grace anymore well then isn't Jesus uh, the, the the captain of grace I thought he was and I know he still is even though you don't know that that's your business isn't it if you don't know uh, what grace is and you, you don't understand it they had a problem in a church I went to one time one, uh, where, where, where the preacher was very heavy into grace and that's good there's nothing wrong with being heavy into grace but he was probably overboard in other words he just kept saying it all the time and so some guy ran off from his wife and came back to church with another wife and another baby and he, I think he sat next to his old wife or something this is what grace preaching can do if you don't use your head as a teacher that guy sat right next to his old family next to, and his wife sitting right there 
and he brought the baby right there as the new baby and stuff. This is called psychosis. This is not, and I don't think the preacher didn't know what to do. I don't think he knew what to do. I, I heard about it. I had left the church. I'm glad I did. But I, I had heard, and this happened. He didn't know what to do. He was like, I don't know kind of what to do. I would have known what to do. I'm not saying I'm smarter than him. I'm just telling him, I'm just telling you that I, 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 I'm in stone. I, I, I already know what I would have done. I told him to get back to your first wife and tell that lady she has to go somewhere else. And you got to take care of the baby. And it's too bad on her because she's an adulteress, basically, and you're an adulterer. And you're, you're right now in trouble because you might lose your soul because you're practicing adultery right now. And the Bible says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Is, 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 is that for fun for Moses? or it, uh, I guess it is for you. It's not for fun. Whee! We read it, but it doesn't mean anything. I get it from some Bible teacher. They told me, uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. It's no more, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean anything anymore. Thou shalt not murder. doesn't mean anything anymore or something. What a bunch of imbeciles to think that thou shalt not murder doesn't mean anything anymore. It's astounding, isn't it? Simply because you're not under the law anymore, that, that means that uh, running a red light is okay or something? It's, it's nonsense. Utter nonsense. And for people who do that, we pray for them. And I, and I don't even identify them that much. And let me tell you something. I don't talk to these companies, Bible teachers that much. I, I've run into them online on a many of occasion. Uh, I was talking with one pastor online. We were communicating online there. And he, 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 said, that, he said that you can marry as many times as you want. And I, I said, you've got to be kidding me. He said, yeah, you, you can marry, have children, marry another woman. You can move on down the line all you want. Because of grace preaching. That, that's what happens to grace preaching. When you don't teach that you're supposed to establish the law and grace. And you are under the law, but you're not under the law. And if you're under the law, you better watch out sinning. That's what it means. That's what that is. So God, 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 still, God doesn't care about murder anymore because you can be forgiven. God might forgive a murderer, so therefore, don't worry about it. Take it easy, bro. I can't tell you how many Bible teachers I run into in my life. And, and, and that pastor was a very nice pastor. But he made a big mistake. He, 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 and his big mistake was, was that you just can't teach grace all the time. That's no good. You, you've got to balance your Bible study out. Now, I'm, I, I did a quick review over... Uh, my introduction to the adults in the room. Uh, um, and I have um, the April matrix, which is April showers, which I'm very happy with. I, I, you know, let, me, let me share something with you. The happiness that comes from Bible study is unmatched. The, the mind and, 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 and the cerebral uh, you know, joy that comes from all of this is unparalleled. They have these movies called Paramount Movies where they're on top of the mountain and, and they're, what they're saying is you can't go any higher than this. Utter nonsense. Uh, we, we can go much higher than, than, than your movie can go. I got news for you. I'm not putting all American movies down. There are a lot of very nice American movies. I watched one last night about World War II. The eight women who came back from Corregidor. Nurses. They were, they were eight of the few that came back, and their tour of duty was over, and they lived. It's a, they're, they're, they, they're heroines. It, it's, a, it's a good docudrama, but the, the point is that, is that, uh, that no, nobody got saved in the movie. It was an interesting movie. And there are a lot of nice people, but you know, people's bodies were saved, but their souls weren't. In other words, we, we Christian people, we're, we're not cold to people getting help in this world. I, I, I've gotten that from people before. You, you're, you're cold to the world. You're, you're cold. That homosexual over there is a nice guy. And you just told him that homosexuality is a sin. And that murderer over there, you hurt his feelings. 
He, he murders people, and, and, uh, and no, I, I, I haven't run into anybody like that, but I'm just saying that's how, that's how bad this gets, where, where all of a sudden, you know, people sense, are more sensitive than God's commands. So that, that, that guy over there is very sensitive, and you're not listening to his feelings. So, so if you listen to his feelings, you wouldn't say that homosexuality is bad. So that homosexual is trying to say he's God. That, that's, everybody wants to be God around him. That famous song they had in America, it was a pretty nice song, where, where the song goes, everybody wants to rule the world. That's exactly what's going on. I, I just said that God said homosexuality is a sin. Those are the facts in stone. I, I don't like them, and I disagree. And, and so what you're saying is you're God. Uh, I, 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 the, the, the police said you can't run a red light, so I want to run red lights. I don't care what he says. I'm not going to be under the, the, those laws. I, I'm an anarchist or whatever, you know. You, you, you make the rule based upon my emotions. I, I really enjoy running red lights. Mm, it feels good. So who are you to tell me to do something that I don't want to do? I, okay, sir. So, the, so that's, that's the line of demarcation, isn't it? That's why Israel means submitted to God. It means I submitted to God. It means I'm under God. You know, I told my students a, a couple of times that when they sang, you know, sang uh, a one nation under God, I, I said, that's beautiful that you've just declared that you're under God. Stay that way. He's God, we aren't. Let, let's get that straight. <laughs> it's beautiful. I like that. Now let's get to work on some mathematics. I'll be right back. Maranatha, Jeremiah will be right back as we uh, get into the, the playlist here of 52 plus. I got 31 flavors here. It's the same thing. It's just that 52 has more, okay? And, and I'm very excited about getting into these, uh, these lessons here. And uh, as we begin to flesh out or to really explore all of these concepts here, every one of them, pretty soon you'll be familiar with all of them, okay? For those of you who are following along. We still have a thousand people signed on here, and we've had uh, almost a half a million people who have spent some time here. Well, it isn't, it, isn't, it isn't as though people don't know us. It's just that they decided that th this might be a little too tough for them or whatever. It's, it's their business. You know, I'm like Noah. Nobody listened to Noah. They all died. He preached to them. He did his job. I'll be right back. Maranatha. <laughs> 